Welcome into another segment of our 2024 Mac Volleyball Preview and Content Days. I'm Emily Eman alongside the head coach for Akron, Tyson Norton. Coach, I am so excited to have you as a part of this. You're entering year three now. I'm wondering how you've seen this team really develop and improve since you came in in 2022. It's been a huge growth and development the last uh, two and a half years. And so we give them the credit where we really worked on our connections, not just on the court, but just our bonds off the court. And so just having them not just be teammates, but also friends and able to re- lean on each other in different difficult si- situations. Volleyball is a hard sport and winning's hard. And so uh, having that opportunity to grow together, it's been an awesome experience for us. Um, and it's really, I think it's going to pay off. Yeah, it definitely thing that you've learned over the past few seasons at Akron? Ah, oh, being a head coach, what I've learned, <laughs> it's uh, how do we delegate, right? How do we time manage and then keep the work-life balance? So I have three daughters at home. And so yeah. trying to find our family here with, with our 22 on the roster, um, including coaches, and then what the work-life balance. So how do we delegate, you know, and there's always tomorrow. My staff might be a little frustrated sometimes, but hey, we'll get it done tomorrow. And there's always an opportunity to to get it done when it when it's time to do it. Definitely. And I want to dive into the team, but first we gotta talk about your three adorable daughters. I mean, how often are they in the gym? Do they love being there or do they just want no part of it? Oh, they're all they're into it. So they're five, seven, and nine. Uh they're volleyball fanatics. They love sports. They're in soccer right now. And so when the team comes over, the team's probably gonna pepper some balls with them and play games, but <laughs> They're in the gym as much as they can. So we flipped our practice to the morning. So when school starts, they won't be able to come as much as possible. But they're at the games. We have a kind of upper uh, stands above our gym, and they're just running laps up there. And the team gets, hey, what's going on over there? Like, ah, that's, that's probably my kids just running, <laughs> running around. <laughs> You're like, it's perfect because they're burning their energy. They'll sleep so well. <laughs> that's that's the goal. We talked talk to my wife about that one. <laughs> I love it. I'm wondering, all right, so which player in your team would you trust the most to babysit them? And which player would you definitely not trust to babysit them? That's always my go-to with my wife when she comes <laughs> over, like, all right, who's going to babysit? There's definitely the players who, like, look at each other and look sideways. Um, uh-huh. Probably go-to would be Melina. She's awesome. She's so outgoing, and she's very supportive of our, our family um, and my kids. And then there's always some freshmen that are just kind of <laughs> growing into college, and they're like, ah, uh, I'm okay. I'm going to keep living my best life right now. So there's a, there's a handful that prefer, would prefer not to babysit. <laughs> You're like some of those 18 year olds probably need babysitters themselves. So we'll, we'll get things going. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I want to dive into your team. And, and when you just take a look at your roster, there are players from all over the place. You have five international players. Of course, a few had played in the U.S. prior to when they came to you, but I'm wondering what goes in behind the scenes to recruit players from other countries. So when we recruit, we want to find the best volleyball players we can. Uh, we want to find the best fit we can. We want to find the best people we can. And so as we navigate not just the the players in the States, but also internationally, we do try to get to know them the best we can. You know, the volleyball skills, an important aspect, but also, hey, how are they going to click? How are they going to work? You know, what struggles have they overcome and how do they solve problems in general? And so uh, getting to know them, a lot of Zooms, a lot of, film sessions is just trying to communicate with them uh, the best we can as by different languages. And so uh, my assistant Andy had his birthday um, on Friday and they sing him uh, happy birthday in six different languages. Oh my so gosh. A fun experience. And so uh, having different cultures in the program and diversity kind of across the board, I think it's awesome just for the future, right? On the team now, but in 10, 15 years, you need to go on vacation. You always have a friend uh, overseas. Yeah, not not too bad of a thing to have. When you have these players coming in, of course, you've had some practice now. How do you help them make that transition as as easy as possible? I Again, I give the team a ton of credit. They're the ones helping navigate that process. And so we'll, we'll I like to throw them in a little bit of chaos and kind of uh, let the drill explain itself. And so when there's questions, they look to their teammates. Uh, well, coach is always here to help explain and kind of guide and lead and teach. Um, mm-hmm. But they're really leaning on their teammates because of those relationships that they built uh, throughout the summer and the last few days of training camp. Yeah. I love that. Well, one of those players, Sedar Lishkovichkova from the Czech Republic, 
crushed it last year. She racked up over a thousand assists, which is so hard to do coming into a program and really taking over the reins. How was she able to do that so well? Uh, give her the credit from overseas of the way she was grown and her dad is a professional hockey player uh, back in the Czech Republic. And so uh, they've had a strong work ethic and she wants to get better. She wants to connect and she wants the feedback uh, from her hitters. And so how do we connect kind of across the board on that front? And so as she kind of stepped into that role as a freshman, I, it's a heavy, heavy burden at times. And so she was very consistent. She's very stable. She very even keel as a setter, which is important. And so uh, we look forward to her, her continued growth. She This summer she was at the U22 CEV Championships for Czech Republic. And so uh, it was awesome for her to have that international uh, experience as a, as a player. Yeah, it's so big to, you know, go up against some of the best competition in the world and to just continue to grow your game, especially over the summer when, you know, a lot of it is just playing in practice and lifting and all of that. But if you can get that game time experience, I mean, it is it is incredible for for the team. All right. So we've hit on the setter. Let's talk about some of the firepower that we have in the gym. Who are one or two players that we definitely need to keep our eyes on this year? Uh, for the pins, we have uh, one of our players from Greece, Melina. Uh she put some work in this summer, not just uh, physically, but also just the mental game of, of mm -hmm. volleyball and uh, how she has her voice and she knows everybody in the department. Like she's the mm -hmm. outgoing and the first one to say hello. Like the staff here is like, yeah, that, we all know her. And she stops by. It doesn't matter if it's academics or compliance or uh, administration. Like she wants to know everybody. And so she's been a phenomenal job of connecting with people. Um, and she bring the international experience again where all right she's seen the game she played at a high level and we expect we hope and we uh continue to help her see her see her growth throughout this mm -hmm. season um and in the middles right we got a few middles kind of going to contribute in a bunch of different ways carliana jones and uh, ellen Kennard, uh with alicia coming into their second to their senior year and her second year their connection is very strong and we're looking to build those relationships, not just with one setter, but the other setters we have in our gym as well. Yeah, I love that. And all right, we've had on a few of those pieces. And I want to talk about the serving for this team because your team has become such an impressive serving team. You led the Mac and Aces per set last year with round two. What's your philosophy when it comes to serving? Uh, find your best serve and be a weapon. <laughs> and so how do we navigate that? And I want them to experiment with a bunch of different serves. And so is it a short serve or a drop serve or a deep serve or do you have some spin on it? You know, as women's ball with mostly floaters, but if you can experiment with a little bit of spin or hybrid type aspect, you're going to find your sweet spot. And so maybe it's not what I exactly like down the dotted line, what it looks like, but I want them to go find their heat and or is it movement and kind of what your serve is, continue to develop that and know what it is. And so when it's crunch time, it's a, I got this in my pocket. I'm going to make it every time yeah i love that i want to look ahead to non-conference play you guys are starting it off in fashion you're headed to puerto rico to take on evansville and liberty how did that tournament come about um it came from administration our athletic director um so our men's and women's basketball team both went down there uh this past season and so they had a great experience and we found out there was a tournament down there and there was a big initiative from our uh administration to be like you guys, are you guys into this? Are you guys interested? Yeah. Like, absolutely. And it's going to count. And so it's not a vacation. So yeah. we want to go down there and take care of business. But uh, there's be time to explore that culture and kind of with Puerto Rico, they have very rich volleyball traditions and expect their fans to be down. The team we're playing with Evansville, they have uh, some Puerto Ricans on their team. And so yeah. I expect that environment to be awesome to, to explore and uh, play some good ball down there. Yeah, I figured with Evansville going in there, of course, their head coach, uh, Puerto Rican. And I, I actually had the chance to go to San Juan a few years ago, and everyone is playing beach everywhere, everywhere you look. So the culture definitely is really fun. And I think you're definitely going to gain some fans from that as well. I know you mentioned it's not a vacation, but do you have anything fun planned while you're there? Uh, I think we have a tour of downtown San Juan. There'll be some beach beach days, maybe beach yoga, uh, mm -hmm. just kind of taking in the sights. And it'll be the first flight for our program in, in a few years. And so It'd be as we're not leaving the country, but getting on a plane and traveling down there to a great destination in, in August, mm -hmm. late early September. So uh, it'll be a fun time. Love that. We'll definitely bring your sunscreen because let me tell you, it gets pretty hot down there. Um, I'm so excited for this group and definitely have so much fun and excited to see how this team continues to grow. 
Uh, Coach, thank you so, so much for joining me. Thank you. Appreciate it.